<clears throat> Welcome back to another coding adventure. Oh wait, that's actually something I think. So I probably shouldn't. Uh, it's not a coding adventure. It's a coding trial. Coding. Um, hmm. Coding something. These are cool. Hold on. I'm all discombobulated again. Okay, that's that. This is here. <clears throat> I like this. I like this kind of CSS stuff where it's like small minimal components that I get to combine into however I want. I wish I'd have to do stuff like this though. Like I get it, but I wonder if CSS needs to have like um, like a class scoping so I can like import a bunch of CSS like libraries and then what then what if I could uh, be like, oh, I want to call uh, card dot main or something like that, like set it to that. I feel like that would be nicer. Pagination, make it pop. Definitely interesting. Video background. I actually have a, I have a website that has that. This is more like how to do this thing. Kind of some weird lines, but whatever. One line of code. I'm waiting for the backend as a service that can replace a backend that writes to a queue or has a cron job to do X data transformation. That's a good point. I've kind of thought about stuff like this too. The like management of cloud resources for most uh, cloud hosters is just terrible. All right. <clears throat> Sorry. I messed up all my windows again. Okay. We're all set now. We've been working, we've been, what we've been working on is uh, removing the Mangoes dependency and switching to use regular TCP sockets. So we'll probably keep doing that. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it does. See how she does. Actually, let me see how I left it. Because I worked a little bit uh, since my last stream on this. Oh, oh, I just have to crack my knuckles. Now I, now I can type properly. All right. This will be the server. This will be the proxy. This will be the client. I'll put this on the left tab. So now, now what I, one of the things I changed was that um, uh, when the proxy disconnects, like we just did, we just killed the proxy, the server will detect that and it'll log out the users. The client uh, notices that he's disconnected now, um, but he still lets you move, which is, I don't know, that's kind of whatever. I think that once it reconnects though, it's gonna mess up. Yeah, now the client thinks he's like two different things. So probably what should happen is the client should probably, hmm, the weird thing is that, I want to have a printout. I think I want to change some of these read bytes printouts. And I want, what I want to do is I want to print out like how many people are logged in. Let's do that. Because what, what I want to make sure of is I want to make sure that uh, once th that disconnect does happen, that that user is actually logged out. And uh, I want to have like some total of like how many people are actively on the server. And that could be like, a, that could be a message that gets sent every like minute or something like that. <clears throat> yeah, we'll see. Let's do that. Um... Some of this mango stuff I can delete now. I kind of like this individual socket management stuff a little bit better because I'll be able to build my own socket abstractions, I think, or my own like connections. I think it'll be pretty easy. Let's see here. Um, do you have network or in the network file? I think I need to have a, uh, like I have this server object. Where is it? Here, which I create. That's what, that's what should probably track. That's kind of like what's um, managing all of this stuff. I guess connections. No, that's, this is the number, this is proxy connections. <coughs> I wonder if I should be more specific about that. I kind of need to finalize, like, uh, I need to finalize how I want to build my connection abstraction. The server con has, is a connection to a proxy though. But when I do this, uh, I have this handler, serve proxy connection, and I pass the server con to that. That holds a login map. So like, maybe the server con I guess it's okay. I'm trying to think. Uh, I have this. I have this um, entity. I need to know what proxy to send it to. That's help. So I can uh, or I can look up the proxy ID because the user component a user component gets added to um, to that entity uh, to track what proxy they're on. So that's that. So that's how I look up a proxy per user. Uh, that's how, that's how I track the proxy per user. But um, hmm. so once you have the proxy, I just need to keep track of. Why did I write this though? It should be global to all proxies. Maybe store in the proxy. That would mean storing it in the server connection. Mmm. Little drop from Jomi. Pretty cool. He's pioneering. Good luck, Jomi. Good luck, Jomi, with the pioneering. Those are, that's actually like a pretty massive structure. It's impressive. If I ever, uh, if I ever get stuck in the woods by myself, I'm gonna, I get three wishes of who to bring with me. One of them is gonna be Jomi, so he can build my, uh, my structure that I live in for the rest of my life. Okay. So each, I think what I'll do is uh, the server will know. Yeah, I think instead of having this login map, I don't think I need it to be global because to build the global map, what I can do is I can just loop through all the proxies and get the entire map. But I don't think that that's a super useful level to have it at. I think the level that's useful to have it at is per proxy. <clears throat> so I'll make this login map. Um, 
this needs to be held in the server con so right here like this is probably more like a proxy connection like i, I kind of have this like i have this like low i have this like networking interface where i send a message it marshals it sends it and i receive a message it reads something and unmarshals it and that's all well and good um and that abstracts a lot from it, right? I just send anything in, it marshals it and sends it, and then I receive anything out and I can type assert or type switch based off of that to pull the data out. And that's like one level of the networking, kind of what I'm imagining. And on top of, that's like a connection, like uh, a regular connection and everything basically uses that same sort of, uh, uh, like every, every piece of networking in the chain will use this sort of path. And then on top of that, I have a little bit of extra data, like uh, proxy IDs, a little bit of extra data. And then also we'll add this new one, which would be login map. UN64, that's the user ID. I wonder if I should make that a type. I don't know, kind of whatever. Unfortunately, where do I make this server con? I really need to have constructor functions. So I can just, where do I make this though? Oh, this must happen in, uh, the, in the server. I have some like start function. Yeah. Uh, UN64, ECS.ID. So that'll, that'll add the login map now. I don't really know what to call this. I feel like a connection is a bad name for it. And I should do something more, um, I don't know. So then everywhere I have login map here now needs to be server con dot login map. Am I passing the, it's interesting I'm not passing a pointer to this connection. It's okay, uh, it's okay because maps are pointers. <clears throat> but all right, let's go through all the login maps and just double check. Okay, that's to do is fixed now. Um, Okay, now if I want to track the number of users and emit that, what I'll do is, I think in network I have a uh, server send, yeah, server send update, where I send it to all the users. Before we do this though, what we're gonna do is, um, uh, I think just at the top, print out, we'll just print out the list of active users per proxy probably. We're probably not gonna print out that because we're always gonna have one proxy usually, but I do need, I still need a test of having multiple proxies connected to the same game server, which should be doable based off how I set stuff up, I think. But there might be some, like there's always some like little weird things that can happen, I think. Server dot, let's see. Yeah, server dot connections. Kind of weird. Why is this? Oh, this is the um, proxy ID. <laughs> a map of proxy. This is a map of uh, proxy IDs to proxy connections. Uh, for I in range uh, i'll do i whatever we'll just do a log dot print line a proxy format dot s print f proxy number uh decimal as uh e connections hello tlk welcome to the stream how are you today so the proxy which has uh that'll be i i'm gonna, I'm gonna make this id actually id is a really conflated term in the ecs world so i'll just make it i i think text technically should be proxy id That'd be like the proper proxy con. I think I do length proxy con dot, um, shoot, what did I call it? Login map. Good, just finished the last exam, kinda. Nice, that's awesome. Are you free for the year now? Or like last exam for the week or what? Or are you done for the year? I guess the, the year's, I guess the year's kind of almost done. So it still seems kind of early though. What are we in? Uh, September? Yeah, September 22. Last exam of the week, gotcha. Yeah, it would be, uh, It'd be an early year if you were done for the for good. Are you studying uh, computer science or like software engineering or some sort of engineering? Maybe the question is, what are you studying? No, what are you studying? I'm too young to pick what lessons I learned. Yeah, that's the unfortunate reality. Oh, that's I think I remember that. They still force everything on me. I'm sorry, buddy. You'll get there one day. <clears throat> are you? I guess are you planning to eventually go into uh, software engineering? It seems like it seems like you do quite a lot of coding stuff. So I think you'd be. You'd be I think you'd be a good fit. It seems like you enjoy it, which is I think the most important thing is enjoying it. Maybe. All right, let's think it through. Not that I'm pressuring or anything like that. Your active users, oh, oh boy. So at least it's saying one active user though. And I disconnect, your active users. Cool, let's go here. Okay, then I reconnect this. Proxy one has one active user. Okay, so the server knows that there's only one active user. I think the client though, I think the client's sending two things though, because the, I think the client thinks he has two components. Two, uh, like I think the client thinks he has two connections. Or how it works is each of these entities has a uh, component that I add to it called like client owned entity, and there's only supposed to be one of those. This is where my ECS probably needs to be expanded. Like what I do now, I think, is I loop through all of the client owned entities, um, and uh, 
send a message for each of those. What I should be doing is there should just be a unique ID. Do you like the hats? We got, we got a whole medley of hats. Hat, I mean, let's be real here. Hats are the uh, only important thing. It's not an MMO without hats. You know what I mean? So we had to go big with those. Um, oh yeah, I was looking at, uh, I was gonna look at the client side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I do this, to, like I loop through all the client owned, but I'm kind of using this just to filter. But like technically what should be happening is when your next video coming out, um, I was trying to get it out this week, but it'll probably be next week. I spent too time. I spent too long. Uh, I spent a lot of time like trying to make my animation library do a lot of crazy stuff, and then I kind of uh, I feel like I've, I've spent my animation budget at this point. So it's easy to get like uh, tunnel visioned in on like uh, doing one thing that doesn't really like make it, like it doesn't really make the video, but it makes it a little bit nicer, I guess. But my animation library is pretty sick now. I can render like code blocks and uh, images and stuff like that. It's almost like a, it's almost like a little mini video editor, but you code it, you code your videos. And then I had the idea to make a video that was like super clickbait title that was uh, like I programmed this video or something like that, because <laughs> it literally like generates an MP4 that I could upload to YouTube. So maybe in the future, once I once I have the uh, stamina to go back and work on my video editor, OMG, yeah, exactly. You gotta throw a gone wrong in there. And I'm live video editor. Yeah, I can kind of show you guys if you're interested. I haven't pushed it at all or anything like that. Well, actually, let me show you, um, where is it? Um, I've been playing around with a lot of different ways of doing this. Like you, uh, I guess it's gonna be, it's gonna be really hard to, uh, I've been, I've been trying a lot of different stuff. Like you basically, like, I kind of made it like, maybe you have slides. I even had it, so like, here's like some text that like maybe you would read. And it literally will like play, it'll play the animations for, like it estimates how long uh, you, read, you read for. The MD file seemed like an interesting way of doing it. Yeah, that's what, uh, what's his name does? No boilerplate does. He has like uh, markdown files, they turns into a slide deck and then he just presents that. So I think I'm actually gonna do my next video like that and not, I'm not really gonna use this framework that I've been working on. But like this will like, uh, what I thought is I would, well, it estimates how long it would take me to read this. And then it plays like the animation for that long. It's like it pauses for that long, basically. It's like this section of the video would last for as long as it takes me to read that. Then it transitions out and it goes to the next thing, which would be like a code block. But now it's, um, there's this present, there's this uh, markdown presentation tool called MARP. And I think I'll end, end up doing something like this. Uh, actually, it might just work. Eh, it's kind of hard, but maybe I can open it here. Nope. Um, but basically you have these little divider lines, which are slides. And then you have, uh, like this is the slide content. So this is just three code blocks, right? Three separated code blocks, each with their own little piece of data. And then this is like what I would read. Like this is like kind of the script. So I think I'm gonna do it this way for the next one. Just cause it takes so long to make animations. It's uh, um, like, I don't know. I honestly don't know how three blue and brown does it. Like, I guess that's why his videos come out like once every couple months. They're like, they look really nice, but it's just, geez, man. Yeah, I can I can show you what it looks like. Give me one second. Uh, workspace. Where is it? Oh, here it is. So like you end up, uh, it ends up building for this presentation thing, and then it'll, it'll look like this basically. So it'll just be like kind of sli more like slides, and then I might have I might have like uh, animations inside of this. Like it might go to one one like when I make the actual video, I might have uh, I might have like instead of a slide, it'll just be black, and I'll run an animation or something like that. I think I'll like be more selective on uh, what what I spend time animating. Just because I have so many unit talk win. <laughs> exactly. My videos will be pro well, I'm, I'm kind of experimenting a little bit, but we'll see how this one does. And then uh, I'll probably make a decision based off of that if I'll keep doing it this way or not. Just the problem is I have so many videos to make and I don't have like, I can't, I, I can't spend like 40 hours on a video to make like these beautiful animations. So I'd rather just make uh, shorter stuff, make like a quick block diagram in like 15 minutes or something. Because like programming this out took a long, long time. It renders tables too now. The cool thing here though, I can show you the video that it generated probably. It's in like fast mode, so it runs the animations really quickly. It doesn't pause at all. But like, yeah, I don't know. You can kind of see. This is what the video would, would have been like. The table, table. The font rendering is not exactly right. There's still some little, there's a little artifact right here. So it doesn't really like look any better. Glad to see you've been busy. Oh yeah, super busy. It doesn't look better than a slide. Like that's the problem I started to realize is like, I'm literally just fading out. Like this one has a little slide over which effect, which is kind of nice, but it's like, I don't know, what does that really add? So if I have like some kind of hard to explain thing where it'd be nice to have an animation, I'll probably animate that specific part 
and then and then everything else will just be slides. Yeah, I think it's a cool. I think it's a cool idea. This idea of like, because um, the hardest part about making a video is uh, the at least for me the hardest part is. Or the most, well, let's put it this way, the most painful part of making a video is the video editing part. So I, if I was able to like cut clips to like last as long as I was reading them for, then that would be like really, that'd be a really nice uh, thing. So I don't know, we'll see, see how it does. It's, it's kind of fun to play around with it. I'm hoping to get like a more efficient workflow at this so I can make videos quicker, but our ship's line of pasting code blocks into VS Code is kind of nice at IMO. I don't think I've seen that. What do you mean? Oh, like he just does like it'll be him it'll be it'll be him editing and it'll just be like this. Like it'll just like um it'll be like, oh then this line, and then there's this line, and then there's this line, and then there's these lines, right? I know what you're talking about now. That is nice, yeah. <clears throat> um yeah, I'm trying to think. That makes it more like uh con you're continually doing it. Actually that's a that's a good point. Maybe I'll try to think of ways to do that too. I just need to make it, uh, I need to make some workflow that's that's makes me able to make videos fast. Cause like I have a lot to say, but I don't have, I don't have that time to make all the, all the beautiful animations. Not that my animations are like that beautiful, but you know, that's a good point, that's a good idea. So for the more like active coding thing, sections, I might do something like that. And I think for like more, any like dynamic content in the video will probably be like renders and things like that, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Just use PowerPoint for animations. It's funny, this MARP thing uh, does export to PowerPoint. So <laughs> could you imagine just me? It's just me firing up PowerPoint, firing up PowerPoint and uh, just presenting a presentation. It's not even in like, it's not even like full screen presentation. I'm just like inside the window. Honestly, I feel like what I want though, I think with the the most optimal way to animate, because what, I, what I've kind of been messing around with is like, oh, where is it? This is what I was thinking of. Like you, like I basically have to like set up all this stuff. Like I add text here and then I move it from here to here. And then I do like blah, 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 blah. Or like I do a bunch of stuff, I guess, I don't know. There's not that much animations happening here, but I think the nice, the nicest way to do this, I think would be like to have some visual editor where I draw a block diagram and then I draw like the next block diagram. And then it just like interpol, it just like, it just knows what got moved where and then it builds that code for me. So it's almost like I want SVGs, and then I just want to like move the SVGs, I guess. I don't know. Igblon does that. But that guy over up edits his stuff, which makes my brain go burr. They're talking about the PowerPoint thing? Gotcha, yeah. Yeah. I really like No Boilerplate's way, and uh, uh, Ar Artificial, I think his name is. They both have good stuff. Uh, Artificial has a lot more animations, though. And his animations look really nice. But like, you just gotta match, like, that, it, just, it just takes time, you know? I don't know. I'll find a balance. I just gotta, I gotta do a little binary search on it, I think. I'll be right back. I need to move this fan. It's making me cold. All right. Fan moved. Unit does algo. Like algo questions. I could do that. Would you, would you like to watch me solve uh, elite codes? I'm really like, hey, Dracula. I'm really not like that good of elite coder. What do you want? Like you want a video about that? You want like a uh, unit of, unit of elite or something like that? I don't know. Unit of elite code. You want a video or a live stream? Would you want to watch it live? Watch me just suffer. Oh, didn't we talk about this? I, it would be like interesting if I did a, uh, if I just like, <laughs> if I if I got interviews at random companies, <laughs> live stream funnier. Oh, great. I bet it would be. We talked about if I did, if I got interviews at companies and I just, uh, yeah, funnier just equals suffer. Yeah. But what it was like, uh, what if I got interviews at companies and I just did the interview, but, but, <laughs> but recorded the whole thing, <laughs> just me interviewing with some random dude or, or chick or something. That'd be, I feel like that'd be great content, but it might be illegal. I don't know. <laughs> I've seen videos where people do that though, but it's uh, it's always for like kind of, it's like, he's obviously joking. He's obviously like memeing on them. Yeah, I could do that. I could do a leak code live stream. The odd ones are good. I haven't seen much of his videos, to be honest. His stuff seems targeted at people. I guess it seems like his stuff's very targeted at people trying to get like, uh, I don't know, like software advice type stuff. But he, he seems, I've seen a few of his shorts though. He seems like he's pretty funny. He's like very deadpan, you know, which is, which is good. I don't think I could be that deadpan. I don't have, I don't have the, uh, I don't know. I don't know what you call it. I just, uh, I'm, I'm a giggler, you know, I just giggle too fat, too easily. What was I doing? Oh yeah. I was doing, uh, counting the number of active users. Oh yeah. We confirmed that. Oh, that's right. Okay. The tree came back. The tree, the tree of thought came back. Um, we have this client owned component. And in network, we probably, well, that's kind of weird. Still thinking about potential unit April Fool's video in 2023. 
Yeah, I'm still thinking about that too. I don't even know. I don't know. I'll have to come up with a good one. What's up, Kai? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? It's weird. I thought for sure I would. Oh, it's because of this. Yeah. So when we receive the when we receive a login response, we set that with the client owned. And then when the client sends an update, fighting with entity framework at work. Ooh, that doesn't sound fun. I like your little web scraper thing. That seemed kind of cool. The one you sent in Discord. Is your entity framework is that for like databases? So the problem is the client owned. I'm treating it like it's a uh, treating it like there could be multiple, but really there should only be one. Oh, it's an ORM. Gotcha. EF is a C. Oh, it's called EF. Oh, entity framework. Oh, that's the actual name of it. Gotcha. Yeah, I've never really used uh, ORMs that much. So they see. I don't know. I'm kind of torn. I don't know. I'm kind of torn on it. I don't know how like value. I don't know. Some sometimes it's like, oh, that's kind of nice, but I feel like it's just a lot to learn. C C sharp vomit. I mean, it ain't go. You know what I mean? I got a smoothie this morning. It's super tasty. Like a, it's like a chocolate coffee smoothie. It's really, it's really hitting the spot. So I have two options. Either I can update my ECS to have unique in, to unique components or unique entities. Actually, why do I do it this way? Because what I guess what I was thinking is that only one entity should be allowed to have this component, but that's not a unique entity. I guess it kind of is. I think that probably the easier way is is to um, when there's a login response, I have instead of instead of modifying this to know who the player's the player is, um, I just have some v variable, I'm like not like uh, kind of global global ish variable that uh, is the ID. Let's do that. That's 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 I think the proper way to do it probably. So the kind of flow will be like client logs in. He gets a login response that says, hey, your ID is this ID. And then he stores that in some uh, like centralized place. And then uh, that centralized place is accessible from all of the systems. <clears throat> Look at the pain. Oh, you have the, uh, what are they called? I want to say elisions, but I don't think that's, that's right. What do they call these? Where, where it, uh, it extends the character set, like they combine them. I don't know. But you have that. I do like this. I think that that's a nice uh, little addition thing. Because that way you don't have to necessarily have the code be super verbose, but you have this, uh, like, it's very easy to see what these types are, you know? And I think that's a nice thing to have. And sometimes I get lost in my in my code even, because I don't know what type things are. Yeah, like, th this stuff is so hard for me to read, if I'm completely honest. And it's super hard, like, it's hard to reason about, like, is it in play? Like, what's in place? What's making a new array? VS Code Rust plugin does that, but it becomes really annoying sometimes. Oh, really? Why does it get annoying? Because I always thought it was like, I always thought it was kind of a nice thing, except I guess when you're actually editing the line, think of them as very fancy filter functions in JavaScript. Yeah, like I understand, uh, like I, I think I understand what the component, I guess I don't know what where is, I don't really know what select does, but it just, it's just hard to, uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, Rust is pretty verbose, I guess. I got to work, but I had to duplicate the include filter tag. Mm. It's a very like functional way of, of writing code for sure. How long am I streaming for? Probably for till 11, probably like an hour and 15 more minutes or so. Maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit shorter. But yeah, no problem. It is, it is very interesting. I just always have trouble reading this stuff, but it is cool. Glad you got it to work. I'm just, I think I'm a little torn on it, you know? I don't, I don't know. I'm not convinced. I'm, I think it's maybe okay. I'm not sure. I don't, I haven't, I haven't done enough of that stuff to like really have an opinion, I think. Or if I have an opinion, it's not a very good one. Okay, let's see how these functions pass through. Oops, client send update is in here. Oh, because I have these functions that are like build. Where does this get built? When I wanted to show why it's annoying, my VS code decided to break. Uh oh. Sounds like you, gotta surprise, you probably need to switch to Emacs and then. You know what I mean? Have you thought about doing that? I have. Oh no. What's what's stopping you? Emacs slow very. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Honestly, if they had Emacs key bindings in Helix or something like that, I would 100% use that. And they had plugins. But like it's it's a uh, yeah Emacs needs a rewrite. This is the thing people just like uh, they want to they don't want to rewrite a code base, so they just keep like slogging on top of it. When like most of the important stuff that Emacs has, like probably isn't that hard to build. Like I me, mean, yeah, some of the more advanced stuff is probably really hard to build, right? But like making a little text editor, then like having specific hotkeys to go like like ninety nine percent of my my keys are up down left right. Oops, that delete. Like they're just like single, like very small things. Go to the start of the line, go to the end of the line. 
<laughs> you need max win. Honestly, dude, I I uh I ser I very seriously considered rewriting or writing my own little text editor. It just like uh I think I could have something. The, the, I think the hard part for me was that now whenever I have a new language that I want to use, most of the time I'm in Go or like maybe Rust sometimes, or I, I very rarely will do anything else. But like now, whenever I want to like try a new language, like if I have to do something in JavaScript or like some little HTML edit, it's like now I have to like set up um, like auto indentation and like syntax highlighting and a lot of weird stuff. But it's just like it, it forces me into this situation where I need to like now I need to like do some coding just to like edit a, a new file type, you know, and that was kind of a big uh, turn off for me personally. But you would have to you have to maintain it forever. Yeah. Any new language comes out. Also, I'm not that I'm not really that familiar with how you would organize the data structure for a file for like a text editor buffer. I guess you'd have just a bunch of buffers, right? Or sorry, a bunch of. Uh, like a bunch of string strings for lines or something like that. I don't know. A bunch of character buffers. And then you have like a window of, of which ones. Sorry, I'm kind of like flipping back and forth in my head. But like, so I make 172 strings to read this line out. And then I have some window that says like, hey, print out 42 to 90 or something like that, you know? And then like, what do I use to render it? Stuff like that. I guess I make, I could make just a terminal one. That probably wouldn't be too bad. But I'm in the Tower Defense Project. I'm still working on it. I don't know. Do you think it's more interesting to watch the MMO stuff or the uh, tower defense stuff? The the problem with the terminal editor very interesting. Yeah. The problem with the tower defense one is it takes a lot of time to like try new stuff. So I don't know how fun that is for you guys to watch because it's like it's like I literally just need to like sit there and like think like is this gonna be fun or you know what I mean? It's a lot of like how do I organize this stuff? But the MMO one's a little bit more straightforward because I'm not really designing any gameplay. I'm just like oh uh here's how i need to like i need to send this message over the network and like i don't know it's a little bit more it's less there's less creativity involved if that makes sense so i figured it would be more interesting to watch me stream that and then I'll, i work on my tower defense one on the side it's both interesting but i basically don't understand anything because i don't explore the code base yet oh you're all good yeah it's uh i've been meaning to make like video like this is this is kind of what i was getting back to when i was talking about videos earlier is that like i have a lot of stuff i've added to the mmo project but i haven't make a i haven't made a video about it yet so it'd be nice if I, if I could stay more up to date with what I'm working on. Cause I've done like a lot of serialization stuff. I've done a lot of like login stuff. I'll have some more networking stuff too. Once, once this is done, you know, but I'm very close to the point where I could like host it on, on a, on a, like a WebGL browser. And then you guys could like log in if you wanted to. That's kind of the, that was kind of my near term goal is to get to that point. Then it'd be more cool if like anyone pops in, they can just like easily click a link at the bottom and like hop into the game or whatever. But, uh, Oh, this is what it looks like. Wait a second. If let automated kind of does that. I haven't seen him, I don't think. Are these the types? Like the blue highlighted section, is that the types? Yeah, I think it's mixed though. Yeah, I don't like I don't like this as much. In uh like in this one, they like they make it smaller. Well, is it smaller? It looks like the font is a little bit smaller here. So like you can tell that's that, that it's not the code. But this one it's like, oh, it's just highlighted differently. So I like it when it's smaller. This makes it kind of hard to see, in my opinion. It just makes it like it's like I may as well have just had the code there. Yeah, it is. I think it's an interesting idea, though. I first saw it when I watched this video that um, I think it was the author of what's that new language that's like a C replacement. I can't remember. Um, the one that Ginger Bill does. What's that called? I think it was a. I think it was a talk by him. No, no, no. It was Yacht actually. It was the guy. One of the guys who did Yacht talked about. Um, uh, yeah, it was Yacht. I'm remembering now. Zig was the one I was thinking of originally. That's the Ginger Bill one. But Yacht is the is the one I was thinking of. That's, uh, they, they had talked about doing that. They require you to do it. I think they require you to do it in the code, though. They actually make you type it out, which I think is kind of stupid. It's nice to read. It makes it easier to read, but it's harder to write. Uh, I guess most of the time you're reading, but I don't know. Definitely a little bit split there, though. But here's what we'll do. We'll just remove this client-owned. And what we'll do is have, um... I think I'll just have some some value up here. Well, actually, what I wanted to see is let's do this actually. Um, that okay, that's whatever. Here's what we'll do. Up here, we will have something. Some. I have to go now. See you later. Hey, yeah, yeah. Thanks for stopping by, TLK. Hope you had a good one, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. I can either associate the client ID with the client connection. Actually, that's probably. A, uh, I'm. T I want to do that, but I also. Um, hmm. No, I think that's the wrong choice. Because if I ever keep the same ID, 
but I have to make a new connection. Uh, that might not work. We'll just make it, we'll make a new type. Um, I'm going to call it player ID. I think, I think I called it invalid ID. That's like ID zero. This is the player's um, ID. Default, we set this to invalid. Go to run that line owned there. So now instead of this, uh, I'm just going to comment this out. So now, now instead of what we were doing before is we were basically trying to filter everything by what had the client owned in a uh, tag associated to it. <clears throat> hmm. I guess, I guess the way I'm changing it to be is that now there can only be one thing that the client owns. Whereas before, before you could potentially have multiple things that you control. I don't know how useful that is though. Like when would I ever have the client have multiple things that it wants to send input for? I guess if you had like a, hmm, I guess if you had like split screen, maybe you'd have like two things. This also doesn't delete the old one. I'm starting to second guess myself now. <laughs> um, like what if you shot a bullet? I don't know. If you shoot a bullet and you need to control that, would you consider that a client owned thing? Yeah, but it's not really the input of that thing. I guess it could be. I'm trying to think of how I would solve that otherwise. I feel like at the very least, you're going to have some, like the client needs to know who he is. And if the client has other stuff, you could do like client owned tags on those. Cause those are like probably more ephemeral. They might delete every once in a while, but this is like the main thing that you're going to be. I think that, I think that that's okay. So we need to pass it in as a pointer though. Cause it might change over time. Actually, no, cause this isn't like its own thread. So we can just pass it in like this. So what we do instead though, is we do uh, input, um, we do ecs.read, physics.input, player ID, not okay. If we can't find, uh, then uh, we build the update. We can just keep the printout. What is this error for? Oh, that's the send, cool. So now we'll only send one based off of the player ID, but this is wrong now. This needs to be a pointer. Um, Oh, I need to do this world first. That's right. Input declared, but not used. That's weird because I'm using it right here. Hmm. There goes my smoothie. Input. Very strange. Oh, I don't need to. Uh, this isn't being returned as a pointer. It's still so weird. Do I have a typo or something? No. Look, it looks like I'm re reading it here and I'm using it there. ID undefined. I must have some weird uh like i have to have some kind of this happens so much to me recently i don't know what it is but i start having like some brace imbalance and then it, then it gets really confused on what's what so strange though i don't know where i could have put this um like it looks like i have it exactly right just read weird i don't know um uh client send update that looks right great client systems undefined client <clears throat> Now we won't write the uh, client owned bit, but we will, however, have to, uh, once you receive the client login, you need to set the, um, <clears throat> you need to set the player ID. We'll set the data at player ID equal to t.id. It's weird I'm writing. Oh, this is the, okay, gotcha. We'll do that. Not enough arguments there. Are you Newton unit? Heck yeah, I am. Dude, I'm, al I'm always Newton. I'm always Newton. Are you Newton? You better be. Or I'll be pretty disappointed. Hmm. Newton that booty. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear it. You know. Always. Uh. It's always nice to see a fellow neuter out there. Out there in the wild. Um. Reconnect. Player ID. Dude, I do not know what's wrong with this. Uh. I must have some weird. Uh. World. Player ID. I swear, dude. This is used. I don't get it. Like I'm literally using it right here. I have to have some sort of missing parentheses or something like that. Okay. This takes a world and ID, returns that type and a bool. What if I do this? Undefined ID. But why? This makes no sense. Um, oh, this is actually wrong. That's the problem. Undefined invalid ID. What do I call it? Um, invalid entity, maybe? I probably called it invalid entity. F does not match. Let's see. That's line 279. We will copy paste that. Compiler error jump scare? Yeah, dude. They just, uh, they keep on getting me, you know? Okay, I think this fixes it, actually. So now instead of the loop, we just look, read the transform for that player ID. If we were able to read it, then we set the, we update the camera and set the position. Ooh, whew. No jump scare today. Okay, now let's rerun our test. 
server proxy all right log this uh, puppy in okay now i cancel this he disconnects relaunch the proxy this guy connects but now when i press up they one of them should move and not the other one no why do you do this oh, i guess they both have input i think i solved the wrong problem i think the problem i should have solved was i need to delete him on the client side the weird part is there's like this weird synchronization thing right because like the client has their world state, and then when they log back in, currently I send the entire world update, but like the server doesn't tell the client that his last character got deleted. So he just remains around, you know? Wait, but why does the input get read for him? Oh, because none of the other ones have an input object. Hmm. <laughs> I think the key is, is that, huh. Well, the back guy, it's pretty challenging to keep this stuff in sync because uh, the, uh, I guess what I can do is if the client ever disconnects, I feel like this is stupid though. Like one thing, one thing I could do that'd be probably be the safest is if the client ever disconnects, I just like delete everything and then reload everything. So then when you reload, you're not going to have this lingering character around. I feel like that's, that's the wrong way to do it. I think that, I think this is a more general problem. And I think the more general problem is that, uh, there will be things that need to be deleted and the message that the server sends to the client doesn't make it there. I think that that's the general problem. So that makes me think I need some sort of like catch all. Like if there's something, if there's something, it's just hard, it's hard to differentiate things that are unchanging from things that should be changing, but just aren't, you know what I mean? That was, that was super vague. Read source engine networking docs. I think I've looked at those before. That's like the uh, tribes networking paper. But yeah, I could look again. I'm curious. I um, I don't exactly know how others have solved this. Well, because it's like sometimes you have things that are uh, like they're deleted on one side, but they're not deleted on the other yet. And so like either you send them either like you're trying to keep the client in sync with what the server world looks like. So the client thinks that this guy's still around because he missed the message that deleted it. Like the server has a delete message that he set, sends that to all the clients that says, "Oh, this guy got deleted." You know, but that message didn't make it to the client because the proxy was disconnected. So that means that either the client needs to have some sort of timeout or the client needs to have some sort of like probe, like, hey, I haven't heard an update from this guy in a while. What's the status on him? You know what I mean? I'll be right back. I need to get some water. Server could broadcast an entity list every now and then, and the client just applies the diff. What do you mean by uh, that? So right now, right now, the server, right now, the server packs up the entire world. Um, which is basically all of right now there's only like one game object type which is the is, is each individual player he packs them all up and sends that and like that's the entity list um but it's a little bit of a hack right because like you wouldn't send everything in every single packet you'd send like oh i want to send like these guys now and then i want to send these guys so every client might have their own every client is like is, is kind of its own little simulation space and it might need to be updated differently so the server should probably keep track of that eventually um maybe like i think that the time i think the timeout way is uh not that good i think the right way of doing it is the other way i'm trying to think though i'm trying to think if there's any other way of doing this see discord Ooh, the server can't send a new pa update packet to all clients for every single world change instead the server takes snapshots of the current world state at a constant rate and broadcasts these snapshots to the clients network packets take a certain amount of time to travel between the client and the server it means the client time is always a little behind the server time yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm doing right now. The problem is like, what, 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 how I have it set up right now is I have uh, the list of everything that's still alive in the world. I send that over. Like the client has no way to know that this guy got deleted if he misses the message that says he got deleted. So like this guy disconnect, like the, the client disconnected for some reason and missed all of the packets that said that he was deleted, that this object was deleted. So he either needs to have a timeout on every object, which just deletes them after like, if they don't get an update every 15 seconds or 10 seconds or something like that, or, or he needs to like pr actively probe that client from the server. Maybe I do this. Why not cache the entity list client side? Then when you get a new one, you just diff them. Yeah. Like, I guess I, like, I think the, I think the way you're proposing would work. Um, I think what you're saying is that like you would, I would send every single entity in the packet. Um, so then you have like this, like, like the problem is the client, I, I don't know if interest management can be done. Um, hmm. Sorry, let me, let me think my thoughts. I think the hard, the hard way to differentiate is that, 
So I think the way you're proposing would be kind of the timeout way, right? Where uh, if I haven't received an update for this guy in a while, that means that he's deleted, right? So then it's the, the hard determination there is that I don't know if we just haven't sent an update for him because uh, he's not moving. Like what if I never, what if I wanna make an optimization where I never send packets, like I never send an update packet for people that haven't moved. That might be kind of hard to track though anyways, so that might not be worth it. But yeah, like I kind of do have an entity list on both sides and I do send a full entity list. So I could do the timeout way that you're describing. And then I think, yeah, like, like you're saying, if things are outside of some like collider sphere or something like that, like they're too far away, you wouldn't send any updates for them and they just kind of sit there. But I think I don't want to delete the entity. Um, I think I don't want to delete the entity. I think I want to set it to be like inactive or something like that. And the reason why I think I want to do that is because like something like, uh, let me cancel this. This is giving me a, this is stressing me. Let me go to my, uh, like you're this. I can just do a circle. Nice. Let's say this is the boundary of uh, people that you can see. Is it pen? Nope. Okay, there we go. That's the boundary of the things that you can see. So like I'm active, like let's say the net, the last update packet, like I can't send every single entity in the entire world, right? I have to filter it somehow. So all these green ones, these are people that you're sending updates for. So these ones are like, uh, you've just, the this is like the client's perspective. You've just received an update for them. Um, and then you have people that have like maybe logged out. Uh, sorry, let's go, let's go one step back. Not that. How do I do another color? We'll do blue, I guess. So then you have people that you haven't received an update for in a while. Like, uh, and, and by a while, I mean like you haven't received an update in like the last second. I think what I'll do is I'll set them like in, I'll set them like some inactive state. So I'll keep them in the ECS world. I'll keep them in the ECS world, but because uh, there's a lot of data that comes along with these players, so like I'll st I'll I'm not I'm gonna set them to some state where like they don't exist, so they're inactive. But like I keep around their like body, their position, their like display name, but they're inactive. So I'm not actually drawing them to the screen, but like this is like the last known place of this person that I haven't received an update for in a while. And then I think you have red things. And the red things are like people that I've received a, like either a message that said this person is delete, like deleted or logged out or whatever, or it's someone who, who was inactive, but like uh, was inactive for a really long time. I don't know. I'm just gonna say timeout. Out. I feel like I'm uh, scribbling like with a crown when I write in this thing. I'll probably do something like this. And then, so then it's kind of like that timeout thing. It's like that, it's like a, it's like a quick timeout. And then if you, then what can happen is like, let's say that the update is just so infrequent that like you haven't seen this person for a while. Um, like you haven't gotten an update, but they're still logged in technically. You just haven't received an update for them in a while. Then uh, all their stuff's still there. Like their current, their last known state is still there. Uh, so they can just be, be turned green really easily. Just like they just receive one positional update for them. And like they just appear again. I think that's what I'll do. Wave function collapse? What do you mean? Oh, sorry, I missed your messages in Discord. If a player should receive X snapshot or part of the snapshot to deal with interest management, Valve has this as their categorization of temporary event, user command, server command. Kind of same concept when you walk into an inactive entity and it suddenly becomes, oh, oh, oh. I know what you're talking about, gotcha. Yeah, we don't know. Uh, you don't know if it's gone or like, you don't, like we don't know if it's gone or it's just we haven't received the message for it and then like the closer you get to stuff the more like relevant it becomes probably then you kind of have this nice like uh state change thing i think i think this will work pretty well actually and i think that um huh i think some i think some entities like this is mostly for players i think i think a lot of entities will have like a specific lifetime like for example if this guy shoots a bullet He's gonna have a lifetime and like the client's gonna get the message oh this guy sent a, like here's a new bullet that spawned here or something like that but like you're gonna know when that spawns what the lifetime of that bullet's gonna be so you can like the client doesn't even need to get a message from the server that it got deleted he just deletes it so i think most non-user things are like pretty deterministic maybe not like enemies have health so you could maybe kind of predict like this guy just died like things like that you can maybe pr kind of predict but like users logging out, like the difference between a user logging out and a user just and not receiving an update for a user is kind of the hard part, I think. I think this works though. Cool. Thanks for thanks for brainstorming that with me. I kind of like how this turned out. I was kind of, uh, I was a little worried I wasn't going to come up with something. Or rather that we weren't going to come up with something. I think this works. Okay. So then when the client receives, now I almost, ah. Uh, 
I'm going to leave this stuff comment that this uh, client owned stuff commented out because it didn't really solve the problem, but it might be the better way of structuring it. So I don't know. There's also a, a thread unsafe thing I did, which I'm not super happy about. But what is this though? Like, what is this from? High level. Oh, this is Unity. Oh, okay. I actually didn't know they made a new one. Spatial hashing. Yeah, this is very this is very interesting stuff to me. Um, like spatial OS is really interesting. I think match. Oh, this is for network match. Oh, this is like the mat like the um yeah like this is for like instanced stuff. I think team interesting. I'll read through. I'm gonna read through this later. But in network, we have a client receive. Okay, this is the client receive function. So how do I want to track this? So this just sends stuff on the world update channel. So what it'll do is on the other side of that. Mm, yeah, we have pull create pull network systems. Okay, so this reads off the network channel and writes it. So what I'll also do is I'll also add in another component. There's all the entities in the delete list. That's weird actually because oh for the server. Gotcha. The server tracks the delete list and sends it over the network in this packet. This is the client side of the delete list. So this is things that transition to like the red state in our diagram. But whenever I do this, I'm going to add another component for the client only. And that's going to be like the, uh, I feel like it should be the like inactive timeout. Hmm. Um, I guess I'm going to call it last update time. Uh, time. I'll just do time dot now. Uh, this looks so sloppy. That looks better, I think. We'll write the last we'll write the last update here. And then we'll have another system on the client which just manages reading this uh, every single um, every single frame. And I think depending on like what kind of like if it's a user, we might log them out faster. Like higher relevancy things might have a tighter update because we we assume they're gonna get updates more frequently. So in here we'll have a we'll probably put it in the um actually I don't really know where to put this. I guess I could do it after this. No, I don't really like putting it there. Create, pull. We'll put it right after this. Oops, that should be that. There we go. So this one's going to be um, manage entity timeout. And we'll just do an ECS map. Uh, we're just going to loop on the uh, MMO dot last update. That's a regular map then. So we'll have the last update. We'll say if, I don't know, we're just going to have some fixed time. Uh, actually, I can just do this. Um, We'll do if we'll just do time dot now. So they call it every single frame. We'll just cache one of them. We'll say if Tim out. I think it's time dot sense. No, it's uh I don't remember. What does it operate on? Oh, it's just a regular function. Since I'm since I'll, since t. Oh, gotcha. I want to do sub then. So we'll do now now dot sub now dot sub last update dot time. I'm trying to think if this is in the right orientation. The bigger one minus the smaller one. Gotcha. Okay. This will be positive. So if that's greater than timeout, uh, I'm just going to do delete for now. Um, we're not going to do the whole like inactive state thing. I think in the future we will do that though. Do I have anything running? Nope. Comp list. Aw. I guess I can do two writes. That's less efficient. Oh. Oops. I think this will work. ECS.c. Hmm. It's weird because I do this like uh, ellipses. Which I thought expands that, and this should be the same. This should be an ECS dot component. Oh well, we'll do two writes, I guess. I th I feel like that should work though. Oh, oh wait, actually I can't do it on this because uh, I need to actually cancel the. Um, I have to cancel the proxy. We'll connect. We'll move him right, and then five seconds it should time out. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Voila, there times out. That's okay, I think. I think that that's good enough. Because like this, uh, normally it would log out instantly because he'll be put in the delete list. But this is like the case where you miss the delete message. So this is kind of like a sub, this is like a little bit of a catch all. Also it's the case like, uh, imagine this happens. Like imagine like you're moving, uh, you're moving like leftward, but like you're not gonna get the delete list for some guy that's over here, right? Like you, you're not gonna get the delete message for him. But like the last thing you saw of him was that he was over here. And then you move, you move to the right. Now you're over here. And then you move back. But he's been deleted. But you never got the delete list message for him. Um, so like you, you're just, you were just out of the position to. So you never saw it. He was deleted. You just time him out then. And then if you ever, you do get close enough where you do get an update, he just appears again. I think that that's okay. I like that. I like this. That turned out okay. Okay. So now we can do this pretty simply. It's still gonna have this, but whatever. Um, I cancel this one though. I can't remember what happens. I launch the server. 
Yeah, the proxy, uh, since I migrated to, away from Mangos, I don't have a reconnect loop for the proxy. The client stay connected to the proxy though, but the proxy needs to reconnect to the server. That'll be the next thing. Okay, what lines were these? 289 and 111. 289. This is, uh, oh, this is from the game server sending to the client. Hmm, why do I continue here? Oh, because this con should be reconnecting. I need to start the uh, reconnect loop on him, I think, and that's all I think I have to do. Server con. Wait, this is proxy. Where do I dial? Oh, I dial there. There is no network channel here, though. I don't know why. Oh, this is the handler. Oh. Oof. I'm going to do something very similar to this, but not exactly. Um, handle game updates. That was this one. Hmm. This is where I probably need to clean up my abstraction a little bit and kind of combine them. Cause I have like a client side thing, which runs a receive loop and, and then can be used to send whenever. And then I have a send and I have a server, which kind of spawns the same kind of connection, which has a receive loop and then can be used to send whenever. <laughs> I think what we'll do, is, yeah, I've been, I've been very sporadic with all of this stuff. WebSocket server, client connection, server connection. Then I have a client connection over here. It'll be nice to combine them all. It's just hard because they have, like, some of them have specific pieces of data which is needed. Let's see here. Okay. Oh, I even added player ID here. Like, this handler, this handler which has uh, player ID and update channel, that should probably be um, some, like, closure, I think. Okay. Well, let's copy this over to con.go. I'm tempted to make a new package, like net or something, MMO slash net. Will that make any loops? No, I don't think so. No, it will. Well, does this depend on anything? Uh, Certies, that'll be pushed over. ECS IDs will be pushed over. Any types in the MMO package will be uh, have to get stripped out. I guess all of this stuff's handled by Certies, so that's probably fine. I right, say so let's do it. Let's see here, we'll do, um, yes. Okay, now that we've broken everything, that's weird. Now for the big decision, do I call it a socket or a connection? Hmm. Like netcon is to uh, connection if it's higher level than a port on a machine. It is kind of higher level. Well, like a little bit higher. It's a little bit higher level. Like it's not, you don't send bytes over it. You send messages over it. I'll do con, I'm gonna do con. Actually, hmm. I feel like it's just too ambiguous. I'm gonna do socket. <laughs> that way that we can write sock, socket dial. Is this the game you're making? Um. This is the MMO project. I have a few projects that I'm working on. Uh, I usually stream the MMO one, and then I work on my, uh, I have a little tower defense game I'm making too, uh, that I work on, on the side. Also, welcome to the stream. I haven't seen you, see, haven't seen you around these parts before. We're doing some uh, much needed refactoring. Some much needed refactoring in the networking area, the networking arena. But I've like, uh, I moved a lot of stuff around, so I will just I just broke everything. So otherwise, I'd show you stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, but it says after watching your OpenGL video. Oh, cool, thanks. Yeah, that that's the uh, best video I've done so far. I am working on more videos. I just happened to see you were streaming. Cool. Yeah, thanks for thanks for stopping in. The OpenGL one was pretty interesting, I think. Uh, also, uh, I'm making another video that compares Go versus Rust, but for uh, an ECS framework. That one will be coming soon, but it's still in progress. I think that'll be another interesting one. The thing is, I don't even know Go. I use Rust. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, you'll be happy to know that Rust is, is faster than Go. So, yeah. Yeah, Go has a, a little bit more unique requirements than Rust for the OpenGL stuff, which is why I think a lot, like, I think a lot of stuff I've read from people is they'll say that, like, Go isn't a good target for it. Um... Uh, it goes into good target for games because of the Seago stuff. So kind of my video is like a little bit of like, here's a little bit of data on that. So if you're making like low, low rendering type games, like games that aren't like super triple A, then uh, uh, what's it called? Then you can use Go, I think. I think Go is a good target. It's a, it's a, such a simple language that it's kind of fun to work in, but there's some annoying things about it too. You want to try to make a generalized network DCS framework where all the sync is just handled and all you really touch are the entity types. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that's kind of like a similar direction to where I want to take mine too. But uh, yeah, I think that the, the weird thing with networking is that like some things just need to be updated more than others. So it's hard to like, it's hard to make networking like auto automatic, I think. But what do I know? I think ECS is a good way of organizing stuff though. That's definitely the rest way to do it. 
you see my our S box handles networking, you just replicate tag like a field or class and behaves like a synced entity. No, I haven't. Is it this one? Is this what you're talking about? SN box? I'm not familiar with this. This is our attempt to create a worthy Gary's Mod sequel. Okay, cool. No, I haven't I haven't read about this at all. Asset.party. Show their latest dev blog. <laughs> History? Preview? News? August? <laughs> oh, after oh, after dark. I like that. Is this one you're talking about? The August one? Oh, the VR thing is showcased how easy it is. Yeah, the VR one looked really good. It looks pretty cool. The uh I don't know why. They they remind me of um Kerbal they reminds me of Kerbal uh Kerbins. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that's so strange looking i love it that's cool yeah okay vr table tennis oh we missed that's super cool oh oh they do forward rendering forward plus rendering interesting i wasn't aware of this at all that's cool i like stuff like this i like to see other people making uh cool things because like uh it's cool to like learn it's cool to see how others are doing stuff so that i can steal that from them <laughs> i'm just kidding so i can be inspired by them it's hard to just like invent a bunch of stuff, you know, but it's cool to like uh, see how someone did it and be like, oh, there's some issues with how they did it that I didn't like. So I can change those to fit my needs a little bit better. I like stuff like that. Do I want to make socket? A uh, I'm going to make it a pointer. How'd you get into game development? Uh, I got into game development a long, long time ago when or I really got into programming just from playing video games. And I was like, oh, I want to make a video game because I played video games, you know. So uh, that's what got me into game dev. And then I, uh, I went to the library and like rented a book about like c++ game dev stuff and i read that and uh you know the rest is history then i realized that c++ is terrible no i uh i don't think c++ is terrible but i used c sharp for a little bit with the x and a when that was coming out and that was kind of big uh i did a little bit of javascript game dev and then i transitioned into go i don't remember i was kind of like trying random languages a while ago and uh i like go a lot as you can tell yeah, I did do Phaser a bit for sure. What was the other? I did, uh, gosh, what was the other one? Um, Pixie JS. Yeah, a little bit of that. You guys, you guys know. And I feel like my, my path has been like, I started pretty high level and I slowly got, I'm happy to found a little tribe of Go programmers here. Yeah, I think it's called Pixie JS. One of them is the rendering library. Oh, Pixie's the rendering library for Phaser. But uh, I like, I've slowly gone like more and more and more low level. Just because like I feel like when I use when I use some frameworks, I always feel a little bit like smothered. Like I want to do something a certain way, but I can't because I have to like write my code in a certain way to fit inside the framework. I don't like uh, that typically, but uh, so yeah, I don't know. Not that frameworks are bad necessarily. Just that's how I feel. Then I end up writing a lot of the stuff that I use from scratch. But yeah, I think Rust. I'm really I'm really interested in learning Rust more. I wish there was like uh, two forms of Rust. Though. I wish there, I wish there was a Rust that like. I don't care how fast this code is section. You know what I mean? Like, I just want this to be fast. Like this isn't going to loop very often sort of deal. So like, I don't know, I guess you can just do like reference counters and stuff like that. But some stuff I don't, I really just don't care about. And so go is nice for that stuff. I wanted to get into game dev and somehow ended up in web dev and right. I'm just making random stuff. Yeah. That's what happens. Programming. So like uh, generic, you know, you can kind of like hop around and do whatever, Like you can get a job in a lot of fields just by being a programmer. I think game dev is fun though. I think that game dev has some of the most interesting challenges in programming. Depending on maybe using Godot and Rust in the future or Bevy. Yeah, I did. Uh, I've played around a little bit with Bevy. Bevy seems nice. There's this, uh, I found this repo which did benchmarks on different ECS frameworks. And uh, Bevy's actually on the slower side. I, re I kind of unfortunately realized. But that was the one that I played around with. I, don't, I think Bevy's pretty good though. I, like, I, don't, I, don't think it, uh, I, I don't think it matters like that much to be honest. Like on your, unless you're really like cranking out like a serious game with like a lot of entities, then it starts to matter, I think. But I don't know. I'm always, uh, I always have performance in the back of my mind for whatever reason. That's weird. What is this? Oh, I'm literally in this package. There's another, like, oh yeah, another library called Amethyst. Yeah. Yeah, Amethyst used, uh, I, I followed that one just a little bit on Rust. They use, uh, they just wrote a new ECS, I think, called Legion. That one's in that repo as well. They had an old one. I can't remember what it was called though. Like I want to say it was called like Flex or something like that. But uh, they rewrote it uh, to be called Legion. Whoops. C dot with sock dot. What if you could do extension methods on structs in Go? What do you mean by extension methods? Like extend? Like inherit you mean? Being able to do 
func c echo context extension and access the c in that method oh 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 i know what you're talking i see what you're saying yeah yeah you have to do like a type def on it and then make your functions but then it's annoying because then you have to convert it back when you ever need to interface interact with the like underlying thing i see what you're saying yeah i think there's been a few times where i was like that would be a nice thing to have but so, like i don't know some sometimes i i think goes like I'm kind of torn. I feel like maybe if, maybe if like a few, there's like a few more like usability improvements in Go, it would be like, it would be so much easier, but I wonder if it would make me program in the wrong way. You know what I mean? Like sometimes the harder way is actually like the right way to do it, but I don't know. Handler world, don't use world. This should just take the socket in. That would be nice sometimes though, for sure. Imported and not used. A lot of errors. Net redeclared in net.con. This is where I have to remove that. Oh, this is going to mess so much stuff up, I bet. Can't wait. I'm going to be, I'm going to be in tears by the end of this. What time is it? Oh, it's 11. Um, I can keep streaming. All right. Sock. Net.socket. Let me look at... Here we go. This stuff looks pretty generic. What do I do for a living? I'm a software engineer. I usually get off at 10. I just have the day off. I was streaming, like, we'll... Uh, I've kind of like wiggled my schedule to be a little bit easier on Tuesday, Thursdays. Um, but at one, once upon a time, I was trying to stream every single morning and I would stream till like 10 and then just get off. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to make it so I can stream a little bit longer. But today I had uh, some stuff in the morning, so I got on really late. So I'll stream a little late too. I'll probably stream till like 12 or so. I don't, I, I did one day where I did like an eight hour stream though. And that was just, uh, that was just brain, it was just uh my, my brain was completely numb by the end of it because like I just have never I've never sat down and worked like straight through talking the whole time for eight hours yeah oh yeah you can look it up <laughs> yeah it was it was gnarly it was painful like yeah I did have coffee I, I should have taken more breaks but it was yeah it was a pain for sure well no it was like it was fine just by the end of it like I literally don't even remember what I did like I don't know how productive I was. I was just like, I'll just do this and blah, blah, blah. I probably wrote like the worst code of my life in those last like two hours. It's just hard. Like it's nice to get up and like go, I don't know, like go on, noodle on my phone for a little bit or whatever. It's hard to just like sit there and code and like talk for uh, like eight whole hours. Like even I like even when I normally, like I'm a lot less productive when I'm streaming just because like I have to like, I kind of try to explain what I'm working on so people can like kind of follow. I don't know how well it comes across, but there's just gonna be a lot of find and replace. Net.con. So this is where I need to have like a socket. So that'll break all these functions. Perfect. But all of these are actually just copy pastes of my other things. So speaking of coffee though, geez, you're making my mouth water. Just thinking about it. I did have a smoothie though. So, and it did have coffee in it. I wish I could program faster. C.sock.receive. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna like write these functions in. Even, I guess I could compose this a little bit. I don't know. I'm defined net.listener. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, I might go make some coffee really quick. You, you, uh, you inceptioned that thought into my brain. Now I can't stop thinking about it. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make that. One second. All right, coffee's brewing. I might need some coffee too. I don't blame you, honestly. What's up, JJ? No need to be sorry. I was waiting for you. I've been waiting for you all morning. You got me here to 11.30. I couldn't get off with, without seeing my boy. Hmm. Actually, I think this I could move to my net package. We're working on the MMO. We had some uh, little revelations about uh, me and Kingston. Me and old Kingston boy. We're talking about this, which is uh, how we were going to like um, do updates and delete things that were inactive and things like that. So we figured that out. Now we're kind of abstracting all the network stuff to a new package. Sometimes I feel like I should uh, um, build my abstractions earlier on, but... I don't know. I guess if I move that, I have to move this, don't I? The problem here, though, is that now I have this... Hmm. These are like proxy connections. But I don't really want to think of it that way. You know what I mean? Should I start with my cleanest possible utopian abstraction and try to bridge the gap between beautiful interface I want and the dirty code that runs it? Yeah, I feel like sometimes, though, I don't know, like, what I want. So I end up do what I end up doing is I end up, like, just writing, like, a hodgepodge of, like, random stuff. And then now that I've written, like... Because I've literally... I literally have, like, six of these... Or I started with like six of these like type of connection objects and I slowly whittled it down to like the socket interface that you saw on the other one. 
So I, I guess I kind of go in the up. I, I guess if I know what I want, I'll start like that too, I think. But this time I wasn't really sure what I wanted. But yeah, it's nice. Like, yeah, it would be nice to just, yeah, do it the way you said. Like, I think that that's probably the right way to do it. Sometimes I just don't know, like, what I need. But, like, how mine turned out is very similar to how, like, uh, HTT the HTTP interface is. It's, uh, it's not, like, perfect. I'm using weird names like start and stuff like that. But, you know. Um, hmm. This is okay. That we can do. I'm trying to learn CSS more so I can design in React. Oh, design in React for front end. Oh, nice. Yeah, CSS is, like, uh, painful. Oh, uh, this is that. Accept connection. Now I have a con. So this is changed. Um, shoot. The weird thing here, though, this is like a client socket. So this would never try to reconnect because the other thing has to reconnect to this. I don't get why C and Java and other languages were easier for me to pick up, but Rust, CSS, and React seem more difficult. Yeah, I don't know. It might just be the way you think about things. Like learning a new language sometimes makes you learn how they want you to think about solving the problem. That can be like the biggest mental hurdle. So like uh, going to functional languages is like a big mental jump for me. Like I, I get, understand the high level. It's just like, I don't know, it just seems weird. But I think everyone's got their equivalent of that. Why isn't CSS and HTML used much when making UIs for games? Um, I think that some people do it actually. I think Kai was telling me that they have this like... Uh, what was it called? Transparent, like transparent web view or something like that, that people will overlay on their rendering engine. But uh, I think that you don't need that level of like rendering fidelity for games. Like, you know, you usually don't have like that many different layouts. You know what I mean? But like they, I guess they do have some, like there might be some complicated stuff. Yeah, I, I guess like heads up displays, you probably wouldn't need it. But then like maybe for like menus and sub menus, it might make sense. I've done it in mono game where you see you have to grab a frame from the buffer and you overlay it on your GL context. Yeah, so the, I think there are ways to do it. Um, oh, 90% AAA games render everything with HTML render. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think HTML is necessarily slow. I think it's a little bulky. You probably don't need you probably don't need like all of the features. You, you could probably make a faster version or a slimmed down version of it. But they might use it just because the code reuse. Like there's so much already written in HTML and CSS that. Like imagine just like overlaying some crazy dashboard on your thing. The slowest part of that setup is transferring data to and from the HTML context. Interesting. I find making UIs in a lot of game engines kind of tedious. Yeah. Yeah, the only UI engine or the only UI framework I've used was the Unity one. That one didn't seem bad, but it was hard to interact with dynamically. I'm going to leave this as separate. Um, com, net com. Oh, hmm. Let me look at the socket again. Actually, let me get my coffee. I'll be right back. Did the stream freeze? Sorry, can you hear me? Let me look. I might, I might have just stepped away to get my coffee. Okay, cool. Hear me loud and clear? Yeah, I had muted. Um, oh yeah, I wanted to compare this server connection versus a socket. It would be nice to have like a, the same socket though. Uh, Net.go. So things like URL, scheme, host. These are the two that I need. And then these are also nice to have. The problem is I'm not dial. I'm on the client side, so I'm not like dialing. New security alert. Beware of BITB attacks, aka browser in the browser attacks. What is that? BitB. I'm gonna start calling it BitB attacks. Have you guys heard of those new BitB attacks? Why is world here? I don't need this anymore, do I? I think what I should do is, I think instead of passing this stuff in, when I create the socket, I should pass it in when I call dial. I'm curious what Mangoes does. I wanted to look at examples, look at pair, new socket. And then they call dial on the URL. Yeah, I like that better. And then in the reconnect loop, well, when they call dial, you know it's trying to be a client socket. Whereas, where does the server go? One side's the server, one side's the client. Dial, this one listens on a URL. I guess that's okay. Hmm. So the difference is just calling listen versus dial. I wonder what happens if you call listen and dial. Basically, an attacker creates a window that literally looks legitimate, even the URL but it's an overlay for masking credentials being sent to the attacker server. They use an iframe pop-up. Oh, interesting. Welcome home there, Dracula. How was, uh, how was your work day? I kind of want to make this, I kind of want to make this the dial function. Like when you call dial, it should just do this. So it's constantly trying to reconnect when it fails. Hmm, mostly chill working on a new one page, one page website. Nice, a little one pager. Maybe I'm a low level security guy. I should finish tomorrow. Don't know what project to, Oh, wow, I cannot read. Don't know what project 
What next project gonna be though? Nice. Sounds like you're cranking them out then. You're kind of a you're kind of a big time web developer, aren't you? Excuse me. Okay, I think I kind of know what I want to do. These are all disappearing. Those are okay. When I do this though, when I do new socket, I don't want to do this. Or do I? I mean, it, I guess it doesn't matter that much. Like I could think of a socket. Like I could make this also like a server. You know what I mean? Like right now I have like a handler function that gets launched every time you reconnect. My site looks like poo. That's all right. See, this is terrible. I don't blame you. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think of exactly. This is kind of, uh, hmm. It's weird because there's two, I feel like there's two connections, but I want to treat them as the same. I don't know if that's the right th way to do this. Like I kind of have a client socket and I have a server socket. And the only difference is that they reconnect differently. One of them, I guess, is listening, right? Like this should probably be listen. Like I should make a new server, which just makes the data. Then I should call listen, which does this. And this should pass in a handler, um, which creates a socket, which should probably create a socket. But the tough part is I kind of want this extra data. It's hard to make this stuff generic because it's like I want this to be specific to proxies, but um, I think we'll just we'll just go a little bit in the right direction. I think um, it might be hard to get it all perfect or right off the bat, so we'll just go kind of go towards where we want, but maybe not exactly there. They call it sock or socket. Socket is. Um, I guess I can just do new socket here. New socket. S dot. It's weird I don't store this stuff at all. I guess it's really not that important to have. I don't think it's, it's just like not that useful because they can't dial this anyways. They shouldn't be able to dial this. I feel like I should just have a different type and then have like a client socket and a server socket. That's probably the right way to model this. Because now I have to do like sock dot con equals con. And I do sock. And this will work, I think. I didn't have the energy to work on this week. I was finishing a big project. They would strain you. It's going to work on the weekend. We're getting all the logic in Rust WebAssembly for now. Oh, interesting. Let me know how that goes. I like this even less now. Okay. I guess I did need that. I swear, dude, sometimes it's so weird. Imported and not used. Oh, this is the wrong one. Net.server, net.rand, net.server, net.servercon, net. error network, net. Uh oh. This is where it gets kind of annoying. I wonder if I should not even put this in. Uh, I'm actually going to do this because I don't think that this is this like grand thing. I don't think I'm really abstracting anything by putting it in a different package. I think the socket one's good. Rand, you can just kill that. Net socket. Uh oh, now we have two nets. I don't know. I'll call it go net. That's the only place I need to use it. Listen, just have to do that too. Doc, doc. Oh, I can't do this. Interesting. Okay. The problem is I need to here, like when I'm a client, I need to be able to make a socket without a connection because I'm eventually going to dial to create a connection. But now I want to make a socket that already has a connection. That's kind of the weird. I feel like I should have drawn this out or something. Like drawn out what how things would be modeled. Because like all I'm trying to do, all I'm trying to do is reuse these two functions, which feels kind of silly. And I guess I kind of want, I don't know, do I even want this stuff? Connected and closed. Adobe XD is like Figma but by Adobe. Oh, I wonder if, because uh, Adobe just bought Figma, right? I wonder if they're going to try to push uh, Adobe XD or they're going to combine them or they're going to deprecate Adobe XD and use Figma. I'll just do this. New connected socket. I right, have a socket that we can use. Uh, this cannot fail. Cool. Proxy's failing. ECS imported and not used. That surprises me. It's true. New client con. Oh, this is new socket now. Net redeclared in this block. Where else do I use net? Oh, for for that. Oh, gotcha. Interesting. Oh, because I'm building a web socket server now. Read timeout. Write timeout. This might be worth it to throw into the net package. This can just be a socket because that's literally the same thing. Net.con, serve netcon, serve this con. This could happen all inside of that, I think. The problem is it's hard to split it up. It's hard to split it up for things that are like um uh things that are like proxy specific versus like where else am I gonna have a WebSocket server other than my proxy, you know? So it's like why would I push that into another package? Like we create a con here. So we can make a socket here and then pass that into serve netcon. Con. They log in, they get put into the room. So the room can just be sockets now. So I think we'll keep client connection. We're just gonna make it socket though. We have two nets though. I um, I feel like I should call this package something different. I call it MSG for like messaging socket, message.socket. Just network fits so well. I could call it network, but that's kind of confusing too. MMO net, I might switch to that. Hmm. Naming is hard. 
I don't know what to call this guy. Um, I was going to code last night, but was so drained for some reason I couldn't get through with it. Yeah, I've been there before. I think we've all been there. I'm going to call it Mnet. How do you do it, unit? Uh, I don't know if I do it. It's a learned willpower thing. I'll say exactly. It's more caffeine than anything, really. Oops. I don't like this name that much. We'll fix it later, though. That's weird. Net. Go net. Oh. Go Mnet. New socket. An Mnet socket. Uh, this doesn't exist. Oh, this changed now. So this I copy pasted already. Um, new connected socket. Con. My encoder. That's weird. Where would it have come from? Oh. Oh, interesting. This one has a lot more complicated of a situation. Maybe this is not the best target for. Funny how you think like something's gonna work out and then it just doesn't. Cause I wanna uh, read. So I read. I guess this can be. This can all be replaced i think it can still all be replaced actually i think all i do is this though um what do i call it i have this client connection i'm gonna do this sock now i can operate on the socket i'll do sock dot receive such a beautiful i have another stream at noon oh that's all good if you have to hop off that's beautiful code thanks buddy i appreciate that you know i like how you break problems down into smaller pieces i think i need to break mine down further than i have yeah i mean i try to i don't know how well it comes off sometimes um, oh no, OBS disconnect, hello, hello, and we're back. Um, we'll do some air handling on the outside of the socket receive. We kind of need to rep, I'm going to keep this stuff, but I'm going to comment it all out. That's the message. Um, okay. So if there was a network error, that means it probably got disconnected. So there was a read error. So we'll set it to stop timeout. Else if it's nil, we'll just continue. I think we might uh, return nil, 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 if uh, we get a zero length packet. That's fine. Um, if it's a Surtees error, uh, obviously we couldn't, we got like a bogus message basically. We weren't able to deserialize it, so it's basically useless to us. Um, and that should be here-ish. Oh wait, we need to tick the timer before we get there. So this will keep us going. Um, on Surtees errors though, I guess if I, um, I guess what could potentially happen here, which is different than the previous behavior is that if they keep sending a bunch of messages that end up being Surtees errors, we might disconnect them. Like they might time out because we didn't like this means we'll only take the timeout watcher uh, if we get a valid message. I think that that's OK, though, because if they only send us a bunch of bad messages then it's like something's clearly gone wrong. So otherwise we do on Marshall and then we operate on it. I think that this is OK. This seems fine. This is server con dot con dot send. That's probably going to end up changing, I think, but. Message declared, but used. Oh, I don't need this anymore. You should time out. Yeah. Yeah, if they don't send messages for long enough, we just time out their connection. Because uh, you have to handle ungraceful disconnects where they just stop sending you stuff. Like if they just, you know, their computer crashes or someone unplugs their ethernet or something like that. Get some errors to handle. I don't know why these are using format. Kind of weird. Return error. Oh, wait a second. I don't want to return here. What about you here? Oh yeah, I just, uh, I stopped the timeout, then I return. Gotcha. And then I'll return out of the go routine. Can you, oops, can you avoid passwords? What do you mean? Handle game update. So this is when, okay. Read data from the game server and send it to the client. Yes, yeah, so we receive data from the game server. So server con should probably be a socket. Is it not? That's okay though. Avoid storing passwords. Yeah, you have to use something like OAuth. If you wanna, if you don't wanna store passwords for your users, you can just use like, uh, I don't know what they call them exactly, but um, you basically use someone else who manages the logins and authentications for you. Then they give you a token that you validate on the back end that says, oh, this person is valid. Then I'll they don't have to worry about storing people's passwords. But we do not have logins yet. So login with Steam would be neat. Yeah, I'm sure they have some sort of OAuth thing. Like my first iteration of this, almost everyone has Steam. Yeah, my first iteration of this, well, I was planning to do maybe, um, yeah, they do. Oh, they do. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Steam has OAuth. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine they'd have to, right? Or some kind of integration. Um, I think my first iteration of this is going to have no login. So you just like click the connect button. I give you a random ID and like that's you. Uh, and then I probably, I was thinking of doing like uh, the Google auth authentication, like Google's OAuth. Because it's going to be in browser. Or if you use Okta or OAuth, OAuth0 or something, you can use whatever file you want. Yeah. Yeah. Steam would be a good one if I was going to launch on Steam. I feel like everyone's got a Gmail though. But yeah, everyone has, has probably a Steam. I don't know if I, if I was a user, I don't know if I prefer to use my Gmail or my Steam. I like to have more than one provider personally so I can decide whether to give you personal email. Yeah, exactly. That's the weird thing about do, using the Gmail one is that like now 
they kind of have to give me their email, even though like I don't necessarily want it. I might not necessarily st store it. Or along with Discord. Mmm, Discord bots. A lot of ideas. Yeah. Well, for now we're just doing uh doing the easy peasy stuff. But yeah, but I do I don't want to manage uh I'll create another throwaway email. Yeah. I don't really want to manage it. Uh any user info right now. But maybe one day. You're still live. Yep. I had to stay on until you got on, buddy. Finally. Alright guys, that's gonna be it. What we got today. Jomi's here. Time to leave. Just kidding. Yep, we've been waiting for you. Hmm. I think this is an interesting project, though. Like, there's a lot of very interesting uh, problems to solve for the MMO stuff. Unfortunately, it's probably not, like, the best use of my time in terms of, like, making money by selling games. But it was very fun. So, there is that. And in some ways, that's what's the most important, you know? What is this client connection? Yeah, the client connection has a socket now. So I can just do this now. Uh, T is... Oh, yeah, because we're just forwarding this. You could tell them make an MMO course, LMAO. More profit than actually making the game. I know, it's terrible. The problem is like, I'm not qualified. Like, I don't feel like I'm very qualified to uh, make a course about making an MMO. I feel like you should, you, should have, you should have at least made one MMO before you sell a course about how to make one. Uh, let's see here. We have two errors we need to handle. It's weird I don't continue here. Like I wasn't ever able to marshal it. I continue. Yeah, I guess because I can't send. But here, it doesn't matter if I continue because I'm just going to exit anyways. Gotcha. Oh, geez, I lost where I was. Oh, I was up here. Error sending. Um, World update. I do need to handle this if the user has disconnected. This was the old code. Else. Wait a second. Oh, this is here. Oh, okay, gotcha. So I read the client connection out of the map. I read the client connection out of the map again. Why do I do that? Like, I have to have the client connection. Let's just do this. If not, okay. User disconnected. Um, yeah, I want to do this too, though. I don't want to lose track of this to do. That's not relevant anymore. That was when I was using flat buffers. That I'm going to keep, just uh, commented out. Now when I'm in here, I have the client connection. Wait, why do I need to get this every time? Oh, that's why. I can't move this out, can I? What's up, X-Hype? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. How to, land a million, how, how to land a 500k a year fang job. That's my next video. How'd you know? We'll call this client. Just don't become the clever programmer. I don't know who that is. Is there something that you hate about Go? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I wish they did. Um, I don't I, like it's hard for me to say that I know the trade offs, but I wish they did uh, monomorphization for generics rather than their like GC shaping that they did. Because when they did the GC shaping, it made things really slow. So it makes it really hard to write some generic code just because like you're going to take a massive performance hit and especially inside of my ECS system like I had to do stuff in like the weirdest possible way just to like just to not have a ton of like runtime introspection on pulling on like these some of the generic functions uh that was one thing I think the I'm not like I'm not like a super uh smart or knowledgeable Rust programmer but I feel like the perfect language would be like mostly go but with like some of the some of the rust stuff. Oh, look who it is. What a treat. What he hates about Go, he won't tell because there's a gun pointing at him by a gopher ready to pull the trigger any moment he shit talks about it. Welcome back, Conifer. It's been a while since we've seen you. It's been a long while. How have you been? But I feel like the perfect language would be like mostly Go, but but like some of the rust stuff. Like the rust macro system would be nice to have. Um, the rust version of generics would be nice to have. And uh, all of the Rust, like, um, mutability, immutability stuff would be nice to have. Yeah, the error propagation would be nice. I was busy dealing with bullshit. Elitism, Korea, and Italy. Oh, and a stalker. Jeez. <laughs> it's only fair that you come back with that as your first comment. That's very true. Yeah, we'd be disappointed with anything serious from you. If you're just like, hey, I'd be sad. I'd be very sad. I don't, yeah, I don't know if Go will get the question mark operator. That would be nice, though. I feel like the more I think about it, the more I think that that's a good feature to have. Because a lot of like the error returns, like when you're writing a library, you just have a lot of error checks that you just want to just drop the error back out. And you don't really like care what the error is because it's like, I don't know how to ha handle this. So the user has to. I feel like the match statements in REST are good. The uh, mutability checking, I think, is like very, very nice. Um, and uh, obviously the speed is nice in REST. Those would be some nice things, I think. Everything else, like I'm pretty okay about. Ternary operator would be great. Oh, I think uh, I think Kai was talking about uh, like in Rust, you can 
Like if you have a function that returns an error, you can be like, uh, do this thing. And then you can just like put a question mark at it. And if this, re if this used to return, like in Go, you have to do this, uh, val error. If error not equal to nil, return error. So you would just do this. This would just return the error. I think it, this is how it works. Instead of returning like two things, well, in Rust, you return like this result type and this like unwraps it, I think. And if it's an error, it returns the error. Unwrap might be the wrong word, but instead of having to do this, you just do this. You, you basically just get to pack it into one line. It's a little bit more dense though. But like when you have to write a bunch of this stuff, cause like now, then you run go format, it's gonna do this, you know? I'd also be fine with just like this or so, I don't know, something like that would be nice. Just to sh like, I'd be fine with it on another line. I don't, I don't know, I'm kind of spitballing here. I'm a spitballer. I want a version with go without the nil type at all. Yeah, yeah. I'd be fine with a result type as long as they have a match statement. How have I been? <laughs> have you been doing your daily lap dance for Daddy Java? Oh yeah, every morning, every morning and every evening. Yeah, I've made I've made good progress on a lot of stuff. Um, I don't have like a ton to show right now just because it's like not building. But uh, but yeah, no, it's pretty good. It's been it's been pretty good. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of new things added. I need to make videos about them, but I just haven't had time to do that either. I like how Rust doesn't need a ternary operator because you can return from an if statement to a variable. Yeah, I feel like that syntax looks weird, but maybe that's just because I'm, uh, I don't know. Don't know, don't do Odin anymore. None, sadly. Aw, that's okay. You can join, you can join uh, us gophers if you want. Just a, couple, just a couple of gophers goofing around. You never know what, we'll, what we're going to write next. The thing, about, the thing about memory management in Rust, though, is that, like, I don't care about it until I want to care about it, you know? I have zero desire to have Stockholm Syndrome. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, now there, buddy. Rust, C, Python, and Go. That's a good list. I'm interested in learning more Rust, but I also don't want to deal with some of the stuff that Rust makes you do. Because most of the time, I don't really care that much about it. But this will get moved up here. We'll print out the, the thing. We're going to return nil. Uh, is that even worth it? I feel like I'm doing the same exact thing. It's just gonna be a little bit simpler. Else I read it out and check if it's nil. It's so weird returning like, uh, like I don't care what this is, but I don't want it, I don't want to return an object, you know? I just want to return like false. We'll do the pointer way. What the heck? <laughs> honestly, honestly, you need to learn how Camel would build with it. You don't need to do all of that. Honestly, I like this. I want to see Eunice stop wasting time on languages and finally finish his game. I want to see that too. Just make everything unsafe and add allow everything. He's doing great lately. Thank you. It's been okay. It's been okay progress. I will one day finish a game. You inspire me to start working on my ECS again. Good. ECSs are important. Don't give him too much praise, otherwise he'll take 20 years to finish the game. <laughs> no more ECS. We will write my ECS again, again, but in Rust this time. Dang. That's dedication. Fully networked ECS. That would be pretty cool. Don't want to deal with the C macros again? I don't blame you. That's never been a good experience. We'll do room dot get client con. It's not equal to nil. We'll do the work. Why are you all? Why do you all like building ECS so much? It's kind of an interesting problem. Yeah, it is. An, it's a fun problem. It's also uh, somewhat challenging. It's also like a big optimization problem. I built mine because I couldn't find a good one in Go. This I need to pull out. This I can comment out. Oh, this is just. There's nothing to happen there. Nothing to proxy. I guess if the client logs out, I probably should tell the server, right? That's weird that I don't. Oh, wait a second. Oh, this is from the game server. So this comes in the delete list of the world update. You need to make a 3D game. Remaster GoldenEye. You need to focus on the most important bits, like finishing a game. Yep. I don't know if knows where I struggle. Sometimes you, sometimes you just need a, a friend to uh, tell you that you're dumb. That, that's my long lost friend Conifer for you. Look, I'm the new pro, yep. There we go. What'd you do, yeah, what'd you do for, st or, uh, now we're gonna have stand up meetings. Can't wait. I cannot wait for that. Actually, I'm gonna do this. If it equals nil, we're just gonna skip the same thing here. Kanban, gotta love them. Stand up meetings. Don't get up to your Jira tickets, everybody. Yeah. Talk about talk about suffering. I've never cried so much in my life. We use Trello boards. That's what actually I use for my uh most of my game tracking. Happy I left the previous org where we had stand ups and workshops and endless meetings about stuff. Yeah. One of my friends uh just became a manager and he's uh he's like He's in meetings from, he's like literally in meetings for like eight or nine or 10 hours every single day, except for like maybe like one day a week, one or two days. He doesn't have meetings. It's nuts though, but I guess that's the manager life for you, you know? T. Oh, I need to pass in uh, user ID. I think I have that. Uh, that's good. Fix some bugs. 
Give it a recompile. Are you sure? Oh. Recently, me and my wife were making lunch and I suddenly realized how effed up I got after working at my workplace to the point I finished my bid and asked my wife, I'm done. I'm going to pass my... Wait. I was about to assign an imaginary dick to my wife. Oh, jeez. Uh-oh. That's Stockholm Syndrome right there. By definition. That's like when you play... That's like what happens when you play a video game like a ton and then you, then you like close your eyes to go to sleep. Like you stay up really late playing this game. And you like lay down, close your eyes, and that's all you see. All you see is like the uh, the pop up from the game, the the HUD pop up from the game. Working at a bank requires tickets everywhere. I believe that. I've gotten more done in two weeks at a new job and two years at an old. Yeah. What's Stockholm syndrome? That's where like uh, Stockholm syndrome's where you. I guess what I said was not really true because it's not technically Stockholm syndrome what he said, but I was just kind of like playing off the thing. Stockholm syndrome's where you um. Like someone abuses you and uh, you start to like love them for it. Like it's, I don't know. You don't have to Google it to get the exact thing. But it's like that kind of gist. So you start to like something that causes you pain. I don't know exactly like why that is. I'm not a, not a psychologist or anything, but uh, that's how I understand it. <laughs> All right, 177. Client con error, new client con. This is a uh, net now. Oh, this is a, uh, whoops, mnet. There are multiple different companies doing audits. Don't know all of them. I know KPMG is one of them for some of our departments. Oh, this is a uh, socket. Yep, this I expected to fail. This one I need to change because now I have, uh, I think I have client con and I have a handler. And this takes a mnet.socket. Let's go to net. Oh, oh, wait a second. This doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it's this. One of my professors last year works at KPMG. Unit one to feel special, special? Kind of. I have a feeling that what you're about to say though is not going to make me feel special, special. It's probably going to make me feel unspecial, unspecial. But well, let's hear it. Memo dot client receive world sock layer ID network channel. What the heck? Oh, can I use funk? Oh, I need to return an error here. Wow, if this works, you look at that. That's kind of weird. Why did this launch? Did I relaunch the accident? Server? Proxy? Client. He finally changed his desktop wallpaper. Yeah, I got it on a loop. It loops, it changes every day now. A lot's changed since you last left. Okay, now you can cancel that. He disconnects and he reconnects. Cool. This one's still gonna fail because we haven't added the this reconnect loop. He got a girlfriend or something that is doing such drastic life-changing decisions. I wish, dude. Are you kidding me? If I had a girlfriend, my background would, would just be her picture, you know? That's when you'll know. I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> Thanks, appreciate that. Yeah, requirements, uh, go go coder, go programmer, hates hates Rust. Then you can do one of those teaching non-programmer learns to program videos. Yeah, that's true. I gotta get a girlfriend for the content. Not for the not for the love or romance, just for the content. Imagine how many views that kind of video would get. So many views. At least at least five hundred. Maybe maybe even six. Never into the pool and live stream, if that is still relevant. Do people get girlfriends for other reasons? No. That's the only reason. Yeah, once I get a girlfriend, I'll start using my camera. Or if I get a cat, I might get that first though. Do programmers get girlfriends? <laughs> yeah. You found I think you found the root of the problem. Uh, yeah. I hate to say it, but the answer to that's no. Conifer's married. That's how you know he's not a programmer. He just he just rices out his, his desktop. But it's all a facade. <laughs> Maybe just American ones don't. I'm a man of many professions. <laughs> um let's see here i'm also a social media manager project manager and a professional shit poster you're good you're good at all of those too here's the real question what kind of women do programmers date um the ones that don't use if statements yeah the one that uses the ones that use switch statements could you imagine dating a girl who uses if statements unbelievable it's on un, it's on un, it's unquestionable switch yep switches for everything you see do you see any if statements on this screen <laughs> I've literally never used an if statement. If he uses if statements, is he even a man? <laughs> Can you imagine dating a girl who uses spaces over tabs? Yeah. I actually always use spaces <laughs> until go, and then I started using tabs just because it forces you to. Have you guys seen that? I guess you've seen that Silicon Valley bit. That's pretty funny. Wait a second. Unit no. Space is better. Don't use spaces anymore. I, I, that's why I said I do use tabs. For the compression. The sound is annoying. Well, I always hit tab. Like I'm not here, I'm not here sitting in the space bar to tab out, you know? Like I hit tab and like whatever, whatever indentation 
white space character type that Emacs sees fit to put there, I use sound is oh convert tabs to spaces. Yeah, what does Rust use? Rust uses spaces, I think. I have to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I've been building up. It uses cancer. <laughs> it uses tabs. Life as a product designer, or the way I call it. A start student dropout. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Ruthless. I think I'll change it in Helix. But I always tell her. Then she flashes her diplomas. There's only one person with a brain, and that's me. I'm the only person in Conifer's life with a brain. Let's be real. And that ain't me. <laughs> um, This server connection needs to be a socket. Why didn't I make it a socket? Oh, wait a second. Server con, server con, server con, server con, server con, server con. World update. I think we're getting close here, boys. Doc's gonna have to be this. Um, Simnet dot, new connected socket. No, wait a second. This is the wrong way to build this. I don't have one either. I got left at college. Unit Marian art student. Learn from Conifer. I need to. You know, going back to languages, I'm genuinely ticked off that I just can't find anything worthwhile for myself. Rust, ain't touching that. Cancer, go. How about no can go? Odin, too much elitism. Zig, how about you pass an allocator for my answer? <laughs> Dang. What's wrong with go? Why do you hate go so? Do I have an error? Yeah, I do. The exact... <laughs> Ooh, Jomi's right here. Only one solution left. Make one yourself. <laughs> the exact same reason you hate yourself when you program and go. I don't know if I. I don't know if I'd say I hate myself. I just strongly dislike myself, especially when I need to do, do something fast. I'm like, oh boy, this is gonna be so slow. The biggest issues I think is the garbage collector getting in the way and things around that. This can only fail, I think, if uh, the URL is malformed. Only Kotlin is not JVM based. The bane of my existence. I can't believe you think you would you would uh, choose Kotlin over over go there you go there's a there's a list of languages sock mnet socket mmo no room dot handle game updates sock but ease of programming not wanting to harm yourself while programming <laughs> i don't know i think i think go is the easiest language to program in like you can definitely do stuff that's uh that'll mess you up but go's got a good balance of like being super simple why doesn't this thing work sometimes i swear Oh, we're using the server connection. What is a server connection? I guess I don't need to have this abstraction anymore, do I? WebSocket server. This will change. Server con. Uh, that face when I have two, four Go books on my bookshelf. Hey, you seem, you seem like an avid Go reader. You sound like more of a Go for than me. That's uh, four. That's infinitely more Go books than I own. I'm impressed. I hate that I called this package Mnet. I literally have to think for like three seconds before I type Mnet. That's more of an insult than a compliment unit, I know. Tables. Yeah, you should use Lisp, really. There's no other option. There's just no other option. The only way. This is a Mnet socket. All right. I like compiler errors, because I'm just too dumb to get everything to work in one shot. Wait a second. Oh, I make the room here. You just make it up there. Servercon, call that a sock. Servercon.con, undefined. Oops, little one of those. Little one here. Nice and simple. We're one, we're one, literally one bug away. Room to handle, handle game up. Oh, this needs to return an error. I guess if it doesn't return an error, that's okay. Holy long, dude. What a long freaking um, thing. All right. Also, Conifer, did you notice our hats? Look at this guy. Top of the morning to you, sir. Tables is scary. Gives me nightmares. Excel VBA flashbacks. You know what my first project in game dev was unit? A pseudo random generating maids in C Sharp with Unity. That sounds interesting. Exactly. We have multiple hats too. This guy's got no hat, for example. Uh, another one with no hat. Another one with no hat. Okay, we're just, uh, you know, we're hitting the lottery here. I don't know if I have a bug here where I only, oh my gosh, let's try this. I must have a bug that gives everybody the same hat by accident. There we go. This is a sleepy, sleepy pink hat. We, we like to call him. Yeah, it's weighted 99% no hat. And then like there's a very small percentages for hats. Oh, it's like an umbrella, hey man. I do, I do my best. My character run off the map in your game. Yeah, there's no collisions. Waiting for the Mohawk guy. Yep, he's coming in three, two, one. Oh, there's a little uh, ranger hat guy. Top hat. Uh, there we go. Mr. Mohawk, man. I think that's all the hats we did. Okay, we disconnect the proxy. We reconnect the proxy. And look, everything reconnected. Would you look at that? Disconnect, reconnect. Wow, guys. 
Wait, actually, we need, we need to do the server. That fails. Hmm. So the server is still not reconnecting for some reason. Not good. Not good. Let's look at where these errors are happening. Net and main. <laughs> man with a leaf on his head. Mohawk hat. Hey, dude, don't insult the Mohawk man. This is his dynasty. If anyone's the king of the realm, it's Mr. Mohawk man. I feel like we're so close. Why isn't it reconnecting though? If you think we're close, that means we're nowhere close to it. Thanks for the, thanks for the vote of confidence. Jeez. I believe we can do this. I just don't know. We need to add some uh, printouts in here. Well, it's like it didn't even try. Wait, did I get a looping printout? Oh, I guess it'd be hard to see this because I let it run. Hmm. Let's try this again. I think I can just do this though. Nope, it doesn't appear to be looping. I wonder if this is just never exiting. Anytime I told you I do my job with passion. Yeah, you're a very passionate uh, shit shit talker or shit poster or whatever you called it. Shit something. Something with shit in it. Actually, this is um, server con dot receive. So the, what we need to detect here is that if the right now we just like squelch the error. So right here, 336, that's probably where the line is, right? Yeah, 336. We're getting an error. So we need to do like a check to see what type of error it was. If it's a network error, we want to realize that the network socket's down and just uh, exit out of it. Go, go to the reconnect loop. Is dot is uh, dot is network dot is. One should have a sombrero, a sombrero. I know they're with a cowboy hat. That's true. Yeah, we need to have a lot of different hats in this game. This is literally just gonna be an island, so the only gameplay content's gonna be infinite hats. Have you guys ever seen uh, Infinite Blade Works, the anime? It's gonna be in this gonna be that, but for hats. Infinite Hat Works. That's the MMO name. Game of the year. Hell yeah. So here we want to return. Yeah, and we'll return the error. That's fine. Here, this was just uh, we failed to receive something from the server. That one we can continue, but we'll print it out. Okay, this looks good actually. And then if the message is nil, then we'll just continue. <laughs> 10 out of 10 IGN. Yep. I just hope it gets a 10 out of 10 on Conifer's IGN. In the, uh, what does IGN stand for? International Game Network. I want the ICN, International Conifer Network. Oh, shoot. All right, let's see it work. Cancel all that. So he's trying to dial. It's funny, it says client website dial failed because I haven't changed the log message. I think it reconnected. I go here. Yeah, so we're reading the data. We're just not, uh, yeah. So the problem is the login message doesn't come back. We do reconnect though. But if I do this and that, that works. So the last thing that needs to happen is just the proxy. When it reconnects to the server, we just need to have uh, all of the users log in. Yeah, all the users need to log in. We need to send login response. I guess don't we don't need to send login responses to the users because they already think they're logged in. ICN, one out of 10. Still better than zero. Hey, I'll take it. <laughs> what are you trying to dial up with ADSL? Pretty much. This font rendering looks a little weird, huh? There's like black around it. Do you see that? I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Okay. In the proxy, when we reconnect, what did I say we needed to do? We need a different color, see if it's the same. I think it's just a, I think it's a scaling artifact. Um... We just need to, we have a room, room.handle. I think I just need to do the room because we already know who's in the room. You said BRB, got to make a coffee? When? Here we go. Did I say that? I don't think I said that, did I? I think I said something different. I think you misheard me. He did, didn't he? Dang. I mean, we have it. It's being recorded. I probably just, uh, unless you're trying to prank me, I probably just like slurred my words. It happens from time to time. I wasn't listening. Story of my life. R dot map. Uh, we just need to loop through all of the IDs. We just need to loop through all the IDs and send. Once we've reconnected, once we get, once we're in this handler, we know that we've connected. We just need to log through all the IDs that are people that are logged in the proxy, and then send a login message for them. Send. What up? What up? What up? The yawn said it all. I know. I had one cup of coffee, but I had a, a smoothie this morning that had coffee in it, supposedly. So I'm at my two cups. I'm at my 500 milligrams for the day. I'll keep this as user ID. Sock.send. 30s client login. User ID. I guess we don't really need to do anything there. Uh, oh, undefined R. Room. 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 When I was in Italy. Came back. Oh, you got back yesterday. Dang. I think I had around five to six cups of coffee. Jeez. You're like a, you're like a coffee camel. I had to go with what the locals do. Snort coffee a day. Yeah. That's a lot of coffee. All right, everyone cross your fingers. Right, we're gonna run up there. Can't kill the server. This guy's not connected. Reconnect the server. Oh, look at that. We're ID two. I kill the server. We're still ID two. That's actually interesting. 
Oh, because the server relaunches. Yeah, it's pretty massive. This is just one step closer. You know, finally accomplished something during stream. I can't even drink one cup, let alone five. Come on, Jomi. I expect big things from you. I expect you to put down a lot of coffee. Yeah, so now I can host this, and then I can cancel, kill any part of it, and it'll, it'll all stay reconnected. I can drink five cups of tea if you want. Okay, that's good enough. I'll take, you know what, I'll take that. Belgians don't know how to drink coffee. Their blood flows with chocolate and waffles. <laughs> cool. Well, this is probably going to be it for today. That's, this is all the energy I got. This was a long freaking stream. It was pretty, uh, the networking code's pretty much there now, I think. The only thing that's left is uh, I need a little bit of uh, productionization and then I need to have a deployment pipeline to deploy all of this. And then I'll put it on my website and then we can all log in. Oh, I want to have a little printout too. I need a little printout that says number of users. That'll have to be another message. Time to spam VMs. Oh yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to set up Kubernetes next. Just kidding. I'm literally going to buy I'm going to get like the free tier Google Cloud and no. <laughs> oh, you're saying you're going to set up VMs and crash it. Hey, I would love that, honestly. Well, you'll be able to do it. You'll just, you don't have to do VM. Just do a bunch of tabs and click connect. Eventually, it'll probably crash your computer because of uh, some WebGL bullshit. But, but yeah, we finally have a little bit of an MMO. I'll still blame Jomi for the crash. <laughs> I expect nothing less. That's the only outcome. The only rationalization. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to call it for today. For today. It was pretty productive, though. I'm happy with how we ended up. I think the networking code's not perfect, but, you know, what is, right? But I appreciate you guys stopping by. It was, it was a fun time. We got to we got a little surprise visit from our old friend. <laughs> Productive. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing when you're not here, I actually get a lot done. Seems like I need to join more often. Yep, yeah, that's probably pretty true. I mean, hey, we're here waiting Tuesday, Thursdays. We're here waiting just for you, buddy. Yeah, hope you guys have a good one as well. It was fun. Not acceptable. Or you want the daily stream? Somebody has to keep him back. Exactly, yeah. If I can't, if I'm too productive, it's just like, uh, it's just insane, you know? People will think it's not real. They'll think it's fake. They need something to hold me back just so it's a little bit more realistic. <laughs> you don't want that? Yeah, I should be careful what I ask for. I'll end up having, I'll end up having like three hour streams of me just talking <laughs> and watching, uh, watching videos, getting banned for it, getting DMCA strikes again. Gosh, remember that? We watched that, video, that uh, episode of Cops. Someone in the FBI came to my house and said, sir, you've been redistributing copyrighted content. Mm -hmm, yep. And then, then, he, then he was like, is that catnip? And I was like, no, it's weed. <laughs> that was a weird video, but you know, what can you do? Everyone's different. Is that a gopher smoking catnip? Must be. <laughs> All right, boys. It was fun. It was a good day. I'm happy. You guys have a good one. Sounds like a new Discord emoji. Oh yeah, a gopher with like a little uh, catnip joint. I love it. I love the idea. Only well, way anyway, I knew someone who could draw, but I gotta go. I will see you all later. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. It was fun. I'll see you next time, next Tuesday. Bye.